What's up, home studio engineers? Joel again from the Home Recording Network with a follow-up video. In the last video, we talked about my favorite way to record bass at home. And we went through these two bass signals that we had, but today I wanted to walk through a typical home studio bass guitar chain. And this is going to be about what plugins I'm putting on my bass guitars. But not only that, what order do they go in? And that's the most important thing is what order do they go in? And these are all the plugins up right here, but how do we use them and what order do we put them in? So I'm going to show you that right now. But first, let's just hear what the bass ended up sounding like with the music. Can we just talk? Okay, so let's start walking through this chain. Now, I'm not going to really break down any of the moves I'm making in this video. There's plenty of videos out there on that sort of thing. But if you have any questions, you can always reach out and I will be happy to answer them. You could also check out my course that I have that goes really in depth on this sort of thing. And I'm actually going to be making a course on this song in the future that's going to walk through everything in fine detail. So as we can see, we got seven plugins on this bass guitar track, which may seem like a lot, but the bass is a very important part of the song. So we want to treat it with the utmost respect. So first, let's check out what this bass sounds like when we bypass all these plugins versus when they're on. So it's quite a difference. It's not really a difference in volume. It's more a difference in grit and depth which is what we want in the bass guitar and i really like the the very crunchy bass tones uh where you can hear a lot of you know that string attack or the rattle of the bass so the first thing we got on here is the fg stress so we have virtual mix rack with the distressor going into a equalizer and this is my favorite compressor to use on bass guitar. I love the distressor on most things, but it is great on bass. Then we go into the slate version of the SSL, and this is where I'm getting a lot of that string and rattle sound from. So I have the high shelf up here, as well as a boost at about 1K, and we're also giving a hefty boost at 80 hertz. and this is where I like to try and shape the tone of the bass. So this is all the EQ on this bass guitar right here. Next, and this is so important for a bass guitar, I like to use a multiband compressor to compress everything from 150 hertz down. So this is all the super lows of the bass that we're trying to control. Yeah, and we're just keeping the sub lows really under control. And what I like to do is compress a little and then add some makeup gain back so that this very sub low of the bass is very present, but it's it's just tucked away and kept under control a little bit more. So after I hit my multiband, I like to go to the CLA 76. So this is almost our final stage of compression here. And this is to ensure that our bass tone is kept flat. And my settings here <laughs> rarely change. Got the medium attack. And 
we have our release at six and we are probably getting the same amount of compression as we are on the distressor. Yeah, really hovering around that 5 dB mark of gain reduction. And this, again, is to ensure control of the bass. It's just like a vocal. I use multiple compressors on vocals. I like to do the same on the bass guitar. And next, we have two saturation plugins in a row. So we have the tape machine here. And then that is going into the decapitator which is just another saturation plugin. And these are just helping to add that gritty tone, which I like to the bass. Yeah, I don't always use the tape machine on the bass guitar for this song I did, but nine times out of 10, this decapitator will be on the bass. And it's just such a great driver for the bass. And like I said, it, it creates and it adds depth to the tone that you already have. And next, just like a vocal, we go to the L2 limiter to shave off any of the loudest volume peaks. If you've ever watched my vocal tutorials, we know that we want consistency in vocals. We want the same thing in bass guitar. So any of those spikes are going to be caught by this limiter and if we play the track here, it might not happen a lot. Let's check it out. See, we're just getting maybe a DB at the very loudest note. So this should not be dipping down 6 DB or anything it should only be reacting to those loudest notes of the bass guitar. Lastly, on the bass guitar, I like to put our bass, and this is a great plugin to get your bass to come through on smaller playback systems like little speakers and things like that. And what you do here is you set your frequency at 80, which is usually the fundamental bass frequency of the bass guitar, and what this does is it will create harmonics up higher in the frequency spectrum and basically trick the listener into hearing some of these low frequencies that they're missing by listening on small speakers and those sorts of things. So if you're finding that your mix sounds great on your studio monitors or in your headphones, but it doesn't translate well to these smaller listening systems, maybe the bass isn't coming through a lot, this plugin's what you need. This plugin is going to give you the depth on those smaller speakers. So that is it for the typical bass guitar chain. If you have any questions or want me to get into more detail hit me up i'd be happy to answer any questions guys thanks for watching make sure to download your free ultimate home studio mix guide i made this for you guys so you could start getting your mixes sounding better there's a lot of great information in there and be sure to reach out if you have any questions or if you need any help with your mixes thanks